The November 2024 general election may still be about a year and a half away, but campaign season is already underway. The shoes of top Missouri politicians had just barely hit the concrete on their way out of the state house last week when they went right toward the campaign trail. Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft had last month announced his plans to run for governor, saying Missouri Republicans had, quote, failed to deliver. And on Tuesday this week, he gained his first official rival, Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe. We caught up with Kehoe on the campgrounds of the Babbler State Park earlier this morning. I watched your campaign launch video, but I was looking for some ideas or some sp specifics about the direction you wanted to take the state. What direction would you take the state of Missouri? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about now for the next 446 days. Oh. Uh, the launch video was mainly to tell people who I am and what my background was and what I've been able to go through with our family. Uh, and so that was more of an introduction of who Mike Kehoe is. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, we're going to focus on four primary areas. I'm a conservative, so it goes without saying that protecting innocent life and Second Amendment rights, those are something I feel very strongly in and have voted to protect before. Uh, but our four key areas that we're going to be working on are crime, which is uh, something that no matter what part of the state I go to, rural or urban, people are asking about crime. Uh, education opportunities for our children. Uh, economic development opportunities, I think I'm good at selling the state and what we can do there. And of course, agriculture, our number one industry, what we can do to expand that for our 95,000 family farmers. So guns, crime, abortion, education, and economic development. Well, Those are five things. Yeah, but, but the four core things, so the, the basic fundamental rights, I just wanted to make sure folks know that uh, pro-life and, and Second Amendment is, is a core part of me. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we're not focusing on it. But crime, education, economic development, and um, agriculture will be what we concentrate on. I'm still trying to learn who's who in Missouri. I only sure. haven't been here about a year or so. And when I talk to Democrats and Republicans in the legislature, they describe you with some modicum of respect, but also describe you as a moderate. Do you feel that the Missouri legislature has gone too far on either the direction of guns or abortion? Well, both parties have people that are extreme left and extreme right. And that's what where Missouri is. Uh, I don't know that I'm a moderate. I'm, I would consider myself a conservative that's willing to talk to people even when they don't agree with me. Uh, based on my retail business uh, that I've had over almost 35 years, uh, I never could afford to draw a line in the sand. I always had to understand where you were, and even if I didn't agree with your position, find something that maybe we did agree on to move forward. And I think that's what most people across the state want. Do, you, you said extreme left and extreme right. Do, uh, how do you describe the, I mean, we got these bugs out here at the campsite, it's kind of fun. That's good, that's Missouri. Yeah, it's Missouri. Yeah. That's more Missouri than Missouri, right? I, yeah. I don't know. Uh, you described the extreme left and the extreme right. How do you describe the influence of, can we use the word extremism? in politics, is it helping or hurting? Well, I think the extremism on both sides of the aisle, if you will, uh, really have kind of gotten steam out of social media. Um, as you've seen the rise of social media and people are wanting clicks and likes and all those things, they're trying to appeal to a certain part of their party mm -hmm. that really jumps in on the social media. I've never been a keyboard warrior. Uh, I'm more of a people person. I like to be able to try to figure out where folks are, talk to them face to face, and then again, try to find out without compromising my core values, try to find out a way to move Missouri forward. Can Missouri Republicans have a primary race for governor that stays positive on the issues, or are we going to have to brace for some of that ugly stuff? Yeah, I, I think that that's where politics is today. I, I'm like you and most other people. Like I, We had people this morning saying, hey, can you run a campaign without saying anything negative? Well, I could, yes. But every candidate will have a political action committee or a PAC, and that what their PAC says or does is outside of the candidate. And so uh, that's where you get into the, the issues of what goes negative and what doesn't. They do the and, dirty work for you. Well, even though Missourians and most people across the country would say we want a positive message and a positive campaign, the unfortunate fact about politics is negativity sometimes moves the needle more than positivity does. Well, you also have to vet the opposition and the public needs to know who those people right. are. There was a little trace of that in your launch video where you said, I didn't, and I'm paraphrasing it here, but something to the effect of you didn't have, you were born into some political family. You kind of made a, a jab at Jay Ashcroft, didn't you? No, I mean, a lot of politicians that are in office today in all parts of the country, including in Missouri, have come from a political family that have been in some form of governance for a long time. Why raise My that issue? Well, because my point is, is that I came from the roots. I'm from North City. Uh, I, came, I came scratching through life. I didn't have anything handed to me. None of my family members did, certainly not my mother. And so our, our point of that ad is that I think Missourians can relate with somebody who was 
born literally with nothing and worked hard to get somewhere, and that's what our point is. A meritocracy. Well, the American dream. Do you feel that that is changing for the next generation of Americans? Yeah, I think it's probably changing a little bit, yes. What's driving that? Uh, again, I think the, the, the world of you know, where we're at with social media and who's doing what, who's saying what, I think um, that with certain segments of the voting electric, that seems to get traction. The Ashcroft campaign was ready to go with a nickname, Tax Hike Mike. Yeah. Do, do you have a nickname to respond with? Or? Not, I've never been great at nicknames, but you know, if they want to put a nickname on, you know, that's fine. Uh, I think at the end of the day, what Missourians will understand is that either as the leader in the Senate when I was the floor leader, or as Lieutenant Governor presiding over the two of the largest tax cuts that's ever happened in the state of Missouri, and I've cut way more taxes than I propose. The, the issue that they're talking about was our proposition to try to increase the fuel tax so that Missourians could mm -hmm. uh, invest more into the road and investment in our road and bridge system. And the reality was when I was proposing that in 2013 and 14, nobody had had that conversation since the early 90s when then John Ashcroft proposed and passed a gas tax on Missourians as a way to fund infrastructure, and that's what that's about. I think most reasonable people understand that different policies uh, adapt to different problems of the time, and that you hope that within the extreme polar opposites there can be some understanding, okay, we've got to adjust government to fit the problem of the day. Are gas taxes in Missouri too high right now? Yes, compared to other states, no, not at all. We're still in the lower uh, quartile of what where our gas taxes are compared to other states. And what Missourians have to realize is we have the seventh road system in the United States and the sixth largest bridge system in the United States. And they so, don't pay for themselves. No, they don't pay for themselves. It's a user fee. A gas tax truly is a user fee. People might laugh and say, well, we're not going to walk or ride our bike. But if you do, you're not paying the gas tax. Are you paying? Or pay if you're driving an electric vehicle. Our electric vehicle, well, there's a little bit of a, a now a push to try to catch up for that as they become more popular. But at the end of the day, if you don't use the system, you don't pay the gas tax. So the, it's truly a user fee. You're a, you're a car guy. How should the gas tax, road tax, mileage tax evolve to capture the changing market? A lot more electric vehicles are going to be on the road over the next eight years. Should you be in office a term or two? You might have to confront an issue like that. Well, part of the uh, initiative that was passed by the House and Senate a couple of years ago establishes a group that is getting together to look at how electric vehicles should be taxed. Right now, there's a tag that somebody buys and pays an annual fee. It's probably not exactly the same as the amount they would have paid in gas tax. Uh, because now you're seeing tractor trailers. Uh, delivery companies are prototyping electric tractor trailers up mm -hmm. and down the highway. So certainly what their use of the highway is is going to be much different than, you know, a Ford F-150 Lightning. So this group is meeting to figure out what would be the proper way to assess a commensurate uh, tax, if you will, on electric vehicles that would equal if they were driving in gas. So that conversation is getting some steam, and I think there will be a solution that comes out of that. Let's go back to the primary real quick. Uh, in the presidential primary right now, we're seeing a, a, an array of ideas, whether it's from uh, uh, former Vice President Mike Pence, former President Trump, or Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on the issue of abortion. And they're trying to figure out what the national policy might be, what state policies could be. Uh, one, my, my first question is, we expect to see an abortion question on the ballot in November 2024. Uh, House Speaker Dean Plocker and others have suggested voters might not agree with the current ban in Missouri. What effect do you think that ballot question will have on your political prospects or the state overall? Well, it'll certainly generate a lot of questions and a lot of conversation. But at the end of the day, I believe Missouri to be a pro-life state. Um, and I think protecting innocent life is the most critical thing an elected official can do. Now, if Missourians decide to do something different on that issue, should that ballot question come in November of 24, uh, then I guess it would be up to Missourians to decide. I will be on the side of keeping the way the process is now. Say your prediction was right and Missouri voters uh, end up saying we're going to keep this in place and, and they reject the question. Would you be in, uh, comfortable with the current restrictions that have a near total ban on, on all abortions in Missouri or do you think there's room for uh, some exceptions? Well, I've always been a person that said there are, should be some exceptions, but I do accept the current law that is here right now. What exceptions are those? Well, I would say in the cape of race, rape or incest. And life of the mother? Life of the mother would be another one we'd have to look at. That's What you do is you start going down. Rape and incest can be, 
I don't want to use the term black and white or cut and dry, but it, 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 it's an unfortunate, horrible situation that a crime um, is, it, is a crime and is very understandably something that we can understand that happens. When you get into life of the mother, certainly you and I or anybody who's watching the show would say, if this woman's going to die and there's a way to try to save her life, we would all agree that's probable. What you don't want to do is open up a loophole that allows that to be widened for some reason. But I guess why would a politician make that decision, not a doctor? Well, politicians are really there to, to set the policy piece, which is we want to protect innocent life. Give us a preview of this. Uh, do you think Bill Igel has a shot in this primary? I think anybody who gets in that wants to work hard, go out and meet Missourians has a shot. I would take anybody who decides to get in or is in as a serious competitor. So, yeah. And my last question, you've been very generous with your time. Thank you for that. But uh, what would be your commitment uh, one, to engage the press throughout this primary, and two, to stand and debate your opponents. I'm ready to debate whenever they would want to debate. That would be fine with me. I, like I said, my background is very different, and I think that's a good way for Missourians to see what the difference in the issues are. Um, I've always had a good relationship with the press. Uh, most of your counterparts will tell you that I've always tried to stay very open to them. As long as we have press people that are fair and play both sides fair, I'm good with that. All right. Well, it's nice to take the tie off for an interview every once in a while. Yeah, it is. It's great. Thanks. Thank you so much for coming out to Missouri State Park. You bet.